uh, I, so the, the third play, um, it's I, I think it's the first play that the first part of the first play of the quintet that is that, that becomes kind of like more explicitly, uh, 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 you know, comic, right? Like you have these extended scenes with, with Arthur and Guinevere and. You know, you see them, you know, cheating on each other. You see them poking fun at each other. Uh, you see them, you know, behave in kind of like a, in, in clownish uh, a, a, a fashion. Um, just from a purely like structural standpoint, I guess. Uh, so, like, we start with uh, first play, which is like seeds of potential. Arthur is potentially great. Arthur is potentially like a wise philosopher king, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, second play, we don't really see that panning out. Third play, we see. We, we see uh, that, in fact, this has not panned out. You know, Arthur is completely different than what we expected based on the first play. Uh, just, just structurally, um, uh, uh, you know, this would be useful for a lot of people. People don't know where, where to put climaxes or what they even are. Why structurally uh, do you think, like, the, the, in the middle of, of, all, this, of all these going-ons, uh, why do you think uh, uh, it made sense to, br like, bring to the fore all, all the comedy, like, starting here, like, when, when all the meat kind of, like, emerges by the third play? Well, first off, I would disagree that Arthur doesn't live up to his potential. I mean, uh, how, many, how many wise philosopher kings turn out to be tyrants? I mean, Mao Zedong was... was could have been at least a solid poet. He turned out to be a mass murderer. Lenin, uh, not Lenin, Stalin and Hitler were also failed artists. Um, Kubla Khan was someone who was greatly appreciative of the arts and did a lot for the arts in, in China, but he was also a, a mass murderer. Uh, Arthur turns out to be seemingly a very laid-back, cool guy. You know, he's living the decadent life of the 6th century. Uh, you know, he knows that religion is bullshit. He doesn't believe in, in Jesus Christ. You know, this comes to the fore in the, the fourth play. Uh, he knows, he knows, that, you know, he even says at one point something like, you know, I, I love fucking these young maidens. They, you know, the, the, the farmers bring me their, you know, their, their oldest or second oldest daughter. I say, no, I want the prettier one, you know. Uh, and so he doesn't give a shit. You know, he's open mind. He, he's sort of a Hugh Hefner kind of character in a sense. You know, he's, He's like, you know, I, I, I'm the top dog. It's great being on top. And, uh, you know, I deserve it. You know, but I don't, I, I don't give a shit. He's not flustered by a lot of things. He, do, he doesn't care, you know, that his, his wife had a, a one-night stand. He knows that she really loves him. And he really loves her in some deeper way than ju just wanting to insert a penis into a vagina. Um, and that's, I think, very bold. And I think that's quite realistic. It's Cassavetian in, in that sense. Um, uh, so uh, and, and, and he knows that he knows that Merlin's losing it. But, you know, he he owes a debt to Merlin. Uh, he knows, you know, he, 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 I guess, suspects maybe that Dagonet is not as foolish as he seems. But, you know, what, whatever what, whatever it is, I think it's a very realistic portrait. And I think the comedy flows naturally from that because, you know, this is the high life of Camelot. Uh, this is after Camelot's been established. He's been married. You know, he's, he's got the queen. He's got he's got all his concubines. He goes, uh, you know, so I, I think I think he's in a very good place there. And this is, in a sense, I guess you would call maybe uh, the swinging 60s. Of, of Camelot, you know, the, everything's going good. Uh, I mean, maybe maybe at some points I might have overread some things, but you know, I, I kind of get the sense that, you know, there, there is a, a, like a feeling of failure. Well, I mean, first of all, just in a, in a purely kind of literal sense, I mean, near the end of the book, uh, you know, as Arthur is dying uh, and, and he's talking to Merlin, Merlin's holding him, you know, as if he were a son. And finally, you know, Merlin says like, yes, you are my son, right? This was, this was the thing that he never wanted to say. He always corrected Arthur whenever Arthur called him his, uh, his father. Uh, but, um, you know, he, he says, like, flat out, like, I could have been a great man, and I didn't live up to it. Uh, and Merlin says, no, 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 you were a great man. And that just struck me as, like, you know, Merlin is sort of, you know, he is losing it, like you said. Uh, he, he did invest so much of himself into Arthur, so he wants to believe the best about Arthur. But, you know, he, here's Arthur admitting that. And, you know, I also can't help shake the feeling that, you know, in, in the fifth play, the, the last play, um, when he's facing off against uh, Mordred, uh, you know, so, so the one thing that you do that's different is, and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but in all the uh, Arthur kind of, you know, uh, literary works in the past, uh, Arthur's original name was never Mordred, right? It, it just, I, I think it's like kind of Arthur from the beginning. Um, but here, like in, the, in these plays, 
Mordred is the original name of Arthur, and it's also the name of, uh, of this uh, alleged, let's call him nephew. And he's facing off against Mordred in the rain, and he himself is named Mordred originally. It, it, and at the same time, you have these like flashbacks to him being a child, talking to Merlin, being like this wise kind of almost philosopher child, saying things that are poetic, thinking about life in a more kind of substantive fashion, other than just being, you know, like uh, so involved with like, you know, fucking maidens and so on and so forth. That, that, putting that all together, it does strike me that Arthur feels that he's a failure. Uh, uh, the, the text itself, the kind of, if there is like an overseer and a watcher, even beyond the watcher himself, but if, if there is like an overseeing kind of force, that force seems to be commenting that there is a kind of failure. And, and watch Arthur here facing off essentially against himself before he's killed. Yes, but number one, it's Modred. I, I, I never like the name Modred. It, it's, 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 it's too, it's too uh, precious, you know, morbid, Modred. Uh, so I went with Modred. And I, I, I borrowed from, because Sir Launcelot in all of the, the, the canon is, was known as Galahad first, and then he had his son named Galahad. So I borrowed that uh, too. Um, but again, you're skipping ahead to the fifth play. We're talking about the third play. In the third play, there's no sense that he's a failure. Okay. Oh yeah, not yet, not not per perhaps not yet. But I mean, putting all I mean, yeah, in my mind, like I have the total, the total totality of the quintet in my head. That is right, true. And, and 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 that that's one thing if you want to look at it as an extended work. But if we're focusing on each play, as I said, episodically, uh, th there's no sense that Ar Arthur's living the high life in the third play. Uh, there's no sense of yeah. failure. We do get Modred. I believe it's in the third play. There's the scene where Modred uh, says to Sir Bedivere. Uh, you know that I'm gonna you you whip or, or he. This is where he gets whipped as a child. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think, and then, I think Sir K is the one that whips him. Yeah, yes, Sir. Actually, Sir Kai is pronounced Sir Kai. Kai yeah. okay. Sir Kai. Sir Kai whips him, and then later on, you know, the the, the Modred tries to make this as this this is the scene of great abuse that he suffered. Even though we later find out that in in uh, in the fifth play that he was apparently sexually molested by his mother, but. Um, so the, the, there's there's a lot of things that I, I try to give realistic motivations for because it never it never struck me as 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 realistic uh, that Modred would have this kind of hatred for Arthur, but the, the the justification is that Arthur was his father. But I always thought that was kind of silly uh, because that would this gets too melodramatic that he'd have incest with his mother. I I put the incest and in, in, in Morgus is somehow. Uh, uh, damage and Morgus is the oldest of them she knows their true origins so she may suspect that uh, or may know that that they the twilight realm is the realm of the fisher king so mm -hmm. she has more knowledge about things but again this is this is get, getting into the fifth play by the third play we do suspect though that that Morgus is manipulating things but we don't get any real sense of what she's really doing so um, one thing that I wanted to say, I mean, these are like, in the, in the scheme of things, like fairly uh, minor um, points, I guess, in some ways, uh, but, um, well, actually, let's, let, let's, let's stick to the third. So the third play is called The Two Fools. Um,